Hi, my name is Brittany J. Jones. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to gather fabric using yarn. One of the most common ways to gather fabric is to use two rows of basting stitches. However, if you want to save a little bit of your thread, and if you have some yarn, dental floss, twine, any of these types of things at home, you can also use these to gather up fabric. This method is recommended for mid to heavyweight fabrics because using two rows of basting stitches on a heavyweight fabric will most likely pop and break. This method is really easy and I'll be honest, I'm thinking about using this method moving forward for all of my garments. The key to using yarn to gather is instead of just lengthening out our stitch length, we're gonna lengthen out our stitch length and also our stitch width. We want to make sure that we have a width that's wide enough to go over the yarn or cord or dental floss or twine or whatever you're gonna be using. So you need a long stitch length and you also need a long stitch width. This is where I'm gonna recommend that you look at your sewing machine manual. Because we all have different sewing machines, your manual will tell you exactly how to lengthen and widen your stitch. This is gonna be a fun detailed tutorial. Let's get started. For this demo, I'm gonna be using some yarn here, and I've cut the yarn to be longer than the piece of fabric that I'm going to gather, because again, it needs to act as the loose thread tails that we will leave on our machine. We're just gonna use it for yarn. We also want it to be inside of our seam allowance, our 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, but you don't want it too close to the edge. For this, I would recommend being at about a half of an inch. And for this one, instead of doing a straight stitch, we're gonna use a zigzag stitch and we're gonna put it on the longest stitch that we have so that it goes over our yarn or dental floss or any type of string that you have that's not just thread. So I'm just gonna grab a pin and I'm gonna place it right here about 5 eighths of an inch and I'm gonna do a figure eight with my yarn to lock it in place here because again, I don't want the yarn to just be moving about. I wanted to have a little bit of security when I go to the sewing machine. So let's go ahead and stitch this now. To adjust my machine, I'm going to select my zigzag stitch and I'm going to lengthen out the stitch as long as it can go. You can see it getting longer here. Now that you have your stitch length lengthened out, you also need to adjust the width of your stitch for the zigzag stitch. So I would go ahead and test out your zigzag stitch over your yarn just to make sure that you are clearing it. Now that you have your yarn here, you want your yarn to be centered right on the center of your presser foot. Now all of our presser foots are different. Mines have a little mark right here indicating the center. Yours may not, but just make sure that you are centered on your presser foot. When you're doing this, it's a lot of things to look at, so definitely take your time. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your raw edge lined up with the seam allowance, whether you're sewing directly on your 5 8 of an inch or whether you're sewing at a half an inch or something smaller. You have to keep your eye here as well as on the center to making sure that you are clearing and that your yarn isn't moving. So take your time and go slow to make sure that you are in fact going around the yarn. Here's a look at my zigzag stitch over my yarn. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the yarn to gather up my fabric. Again, make sure that you have one side of the yarn secured. Once you have it gathered up, to where it needs to be, I would take another pin and do another figure eight, or you could also tie it in a knot. We just want to secure it until we attach it to the other pattern piece that we're gonna be sewing it to so that nothing comes undone. Once you have pulled up on your cord, and I'm gonna use this fabric here because again, you could be attaching to a waistband, you could be attaching to a bodice, once you have it pulled up to match what you're gonna be attaching it to, and as you can see, I pulled a little too much, so I'm just gonna let some of the stitches out here. Before we pin it in place though, you just want to distribute your gathers to make sure that everything is even. You don't want it to be one section full of gathers and then the other sections, not so much. So just take your time 
and just distribute your gathers evenly. Once you have them distributed, then you can take your fabric piece. Again, this could be a waistband, it could be a bodice. You want to go ahead and pin it together, right size facing, and pin it in place. Now, once you have pinned your pattern piece to the fabric that you have gathered, now you wanna go ahead and stitch it in place. For this, we're gonna put our stitch length back on a straight stitch for regular stitch, and we're gonna begin stitching from one side, back stitching at the end and back stitch at the other end. And since we did not stitch directly on our seam line, we should not hit the zigzag stitch while we are stitching. Let's go ahead and stitch it now. Okay, I went ahead and cut off my excess yarn, so my yarn is in here now. However, if we did this correctly, we should just be able to pull our yarn and it just come out smoothly. So let's go ahead and grab the yarn and give it a pull. and your gathers are still intact. So now for your garment, you would follow along with the remaining directions to go ahead and construct the project that you are making.